like some important considerations for intercultural development need to be discussed. First, we talked a little bit about this in the globalization and media about economic threat. And I think this is something that's really important for local cultures, especially and governments, how a company or even an institution will affect the economy in local areas. Some of these things really need to be thought through, worked with other cultures and have a dialogue and a give and take and be able to be upfront and to be able to discuss some of the different approaches you might be able to to work with. And with that, different approaches, even how employees are managed with the locals, how are they going to be treated? How are they going to be paid? What is their work schedule? What things do you need to consider for the work day, how many days a week, how many hours in a day. These vary according to cultures. Some cultures, like in the Middle East and Central and South America, have a longer lunch hour period. So those things need to be considered as well if you're going to set up a school or work in an institution down there or, or for a company if you're going to be doing some training for a company. Obviously, language barriers are something that definitely needs to be considered for intercultural development as you develop that way. Or you're going to a, a country where they speak a different language than your own. Here on this slide, I placed a couple of columns here. One is a productive and one's a destructive way to manage intercultural conflict, as we talked about in the last slide. And you, as you read through there, you see if things aren't spelled out up front, how are we going to deal with conflict? Are we going to wait until everything builds up and then explode? Or are we going to deal with things incrementally, a little bit at a time, and deal with them as they come up, rather than wait till a huge explosion comes out. Now, one thing that you want to take into consideration as well is local culture. Like in the in the in Asian cultures, for example, singling out one person can be very detrimental, very shameful. A lot of times you'll see those cultures address the community of workers. So it'd be like a department or a group, a cohort of, of people, even students, where you would not want to single out one lest the other be shamed and not come back to work or come back to class. You want to be cooperative in your problem solving and a win-win solution for everyone So and how we deal with that. So be careful, really understand the local culture and how to manage intercultural conflict, whether that's through orientation, reading, understanding, talking with others in the field. In many ways, this could be your demise and how you handle intercultural conflict, whether you're going to be successful working in a different culture or not. And here's another diagram to just kind of illustrate a positive way to manage intercultural conflict versus the destructive, where as you see on the destructive, everything's on the outside, right? It's kind of alienated, independent of working with trust and perceived similarities and flexibilities to, through funneling that to open communication and allowing things to be open and discussed so that we could have a cooperative spirit rather than a competitive spirit. And in in many cultures, a competitive spirit can be very destructive, where things are more based for the community, and the community succeeds, we all succeed. One person succeeds in in some areas uh, outside of the West, in America in particular, that's a, a high ideal, but in other cultures, that's very uh, frowned upon and looked upon as somebody who's trying to get all the attention and is trying to be more important than the rest of us. And so that kind of mentality and spirit needs to be really tamed and understood how you should react and act with others in an intercultural environment to manage and deal with intercultural conflict rather than trying to be the one with all the answers and the right have the right ideas in your own mind be more of a team player cooperating building that that trust and being able to flex when you can and see things from a different viewpoint I think the basis of it, effective intercultural development is really something that needs to, to be thought through as you plan and, and work through strategy of how you may one day be involved in this area where you're going to have the opportunity to be in another culture and to work and, and how would you want to be effective in that and in developing yourself to work interculturally is really an understanding of the manner in which people develop their racial and or their ethnic identity. So once again, it's a really, it's a good opportunity to have an understanding of the manner in which people develop their racial and or ethnic identity. In particular, intercultural development is understanding how people from another culture develop their ability to understand 
and interact more effectively with people different from themselves. Your your host culture where you're going into, they have a certain way they work with outsiders. You're going to have to adapt and to be, be able to assimilate into their culture in a way that you can identify and work within that structure so that you can, can best communicate and, and be effective in your work. So really, once again, it's understanding of the manner in which people develop their racial and or ethnic identity. How is it? Is it through group? Is it through individual? Is it by gender? Is it by age, you know cohort, like age groups? Is it, was it stratified that way by young men, old men? Are, are older men considered not as important? Kind of been there, done that, the old dog doesn't know much, or is, or is an older person esteemed and looked at as a wise person? So, you know, you really got to think through some of these things as we, from those of us from the West, go work in some of these other cultures around the world. And so really understanding the role of women and the role of, of kids and different systems of the hierarchy of how the culture they view their identities as they as they grow into d and go through the different uh, stages of life. Uh, I know in, when we worked in in the culture that we worked with, they actually had a term for when a man became a distinguished b individual. It was around the time that he was in his mid to late forties, and it was a specific term. He wasn't just a man anymore. He was called behetema, which was one of the more esteemed people. Kind of a term of not just salutation like Mr. or Sir, but really it had its own classification as, as an identity. Understanding how cultures put that together and do that it can be very effective in your intercultural development. Three more here I have on this slide to consider about your approach to intercultural development, not only with the racial identity and the ethnic, how people form that, but then also, you know, social context. How are people viewed socially, economically? Does that have any effect with status within that pertains to identity and your ability to work and understand how to effectively work in an intercultural situation? Also, history and polit political context. What things have influenced them? What has gotten them to where they are now that influences their worldview and how that they view others around them. What sort of things have played a part in that? What are some of the, the critical and interpretive pieces to that that you may need to consider and study and understand so that you have a better understanding of the filter in the grid that that culture is coming from? Why can't we all get along and think through? We have stereotypes in our culture and it is important to realize that other cultures have those as well, stereotypes, and to understand what those stereotypes are. They have histories of discrimination and socially accepted norms. And one of our big areas that, that the people from the West struggle with is a lack of knowledge about the belief system of others. So understanding those things can be very important in helping us to, to work effectively in another culture. Finally, things that we need to consider in our cultural development working with other cultures is gender, obviously, roles of men and women, ethnicity, how different language groups and different cultures within other countries work with each other, some of the histories behind that and, and understanding those things, and just avoid local politics as much as you can. And being on one side or the other it will alienate you. Take a neutral stance on those things for local politics. Also understanding the value differences that people have in different cultures. Some, some value relationships more than productivity. And I think in America, it's all about productivity. And what have you done for me lately versus time to spend with a friend or a colleague or a family member. For many people, that's a value system, obviously. And there are, you know, these are generalizations, but as a whole, our culture really much values time, time management, things like that, where other cultures, it's about relationships. And then we talked about this a little bit already with Asian cultures, but this is in, in other cultures as well. I think of the Latin American communities are very much more collectivistic societies, more family oriented than individualistic. So those things, I also consider those as going forward in your intercultural development.